Again, we are completing a course of study on the Gospel of Mark, and this closes out lesson number 13, The Risen Lord. For this quarter, we anticipate studying the Gospel of John next quarter. The Risen Lord. It had to be that God raised Jesus up, having loosed the pains of death, we read in Acts 2.24. Because, it says, it was not possible that he should be held by it, that is, death. Those were not the pains of mere sleep. Not only did he make the total commitment of his soul unto eternal death, not seeing through the portals of the tomb, writes Ellen White in Desire of Ages 753, he actually did experience the total agony of the real second death. Those who deny this do not understand why his agape made it not possible that he should be held in the tomb. Christ's resurrection is an eternal principle. All who choose to be crucified with Christ, motivated by this agape of Christ to die with him the second death, says Paul, cannot possibly help be held in its grasp. If we have been united together in the likeness of his death, writes the Apostle, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Romans 6, 5. But that awful second death could not hold him. Satan wanted to keep him a captive there, but it was impossible. The Son of God had lived and dry, died triumphant over sin and Satan. He had con condemned sin in the flesh, our fallen sinful flesh, and had gained the victory for the entire human race. Jesus had single-handedly wrested from Satan the control and rulership of this world. He had conquered sin, and now he must be resurrected as triumphant over death as well. In, his in our behalf, he has humbled himself through those steps of condensation, condescension that we read of in Philippians 2, 5 through 8. He became a slave for our sake. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, the death that involves suffering the awful curse of God, and now the Father must highly exalt him and give him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The voice of the Father called Jesus come forth from that prison, a house of death. It was so real. And he carefully folded the grave clothes they had wrapped about him and laid them down neatly. And then he stepped out of the dark tomb into the everlasting light of his resurrection life. And yes, you in him, you and I are resurrected also. He that hath the Son hath eternal life, says John, 1 John 5, 11 and 12. Jesus had said, because I live, ye shall also live. John 14, 19. That is why when Jesus was resurrected, you were resurrected also. And so, be happy forever and demonstrate your thankfulness by following him wheresoever he goeth. Father in heaven, thank you that you did not leave Jesus in the cold tomb but you called your son to come forth. In his name we pray, amen.